Get your Bibles out and go to Genesis chapter 1. Isn't this fun? Genesis 1. I, my sermon today is called Why Women? You'll see in a minute why I said that. Why? Why, God? Why? So I wanted to let you know that at the there's a place in St. Thomas. Just come back next week. I finally had to drag her out of there. And after she went through my savings account, she pulled hers out. But she looked like a princess walking down with all that gold hanging off her, you know. And I said, well, that's one. So I had to tell everybody she has a very good husband. Amen. Genesis chapter 1. She's a very good wife, and I'll tell you this. She likes nice stuff, but she is very, um, frugal's not the right word. She's very conscious of overpaying more than something's worth. And she just won't do it. So this poor man <laughs> drags Lisa in to the jewelry store. And when she finished him with him, he was begging her to leave. And I don't want to use the word Jewing you down. About 45 minutes later, he was just going, lady, I'll, I'll just sell it to you for that. And I mean, she, she got some deals. I mean, she really came out of there, but they were happy to see her leave. And she beat, the, she beat the guy up for the ring, and she got a necklace, and she got another. She all, every time, and then the next guy would pull her in, and I'd go, poor sucker, and I'd sit down. <laughs> but she did good. She did good. And she had a lot of fun. We went snorkeling, uh, went to St. John's, went swimming, went climbed a couple of mountains, and we just had, we just had a good time. Just, but I'll tell you, there's nothing like coming home and looking around the room and finding a bed and knowing where the bathroom is in the middle of the night. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so Genesis, Genesis chapter 1, are you all ready? 1 verse 26, God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them, underline them, pay attention, have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. And God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Now, let's talk about this for a minute, because we have new people in here who have never heard me do a Mother's Day, so I'm going to back up a minute. When the Bible says that God put Adam in a sleep, the word he used there was Adam, A-D-O-M, Adam. He took Adam and put him in sleep. And then he took a side of Adam, a side, not a rib. When they, when they, when they translated the Bible, uh, they didn't know what to do with the word aside. Because you understand, they're not thinking spiritually. They're not born again. They're just trying to translate the Bible into English the best way they do. But what they did, what God did, was that God is masculine and feminine. There is a female side to God. And now a lot of women would go, yeah, we knew that. The image that we've had is that God is male. And then he made a woman, okay? And she ate Adam out of house and home, okay? So, but, but, but because of that, people have, they've, they've treated women very differently than, than they treat men. But, but when you're reading the Bible and you understand that he says he made man, Adam in his image, and Ish and Ishi, he created them. In other words, he, me, he created the masculine side of God, and then he created the feminine side of God. There is a side of God that until a child looks and sees mommy and daddy, they'll never know God. Because there's a side of God that you can only get from the mom. She's the nurturing side of God. 
In my house growing up, the boys knew if I walked in the room and said something, do it. I don't give warning shots. After the, the dust settles, mama comes in and says, you better mind your dad. And then they curl up in her arms and she nurtures them back because she is the nurturing side of God. Today, even to this day, they don't call me. <laughs> even though everything they own, I gave them, they call mom. But I said that because I want, the, I want you as a female to understand that God did not make you lesser in any ways, but he did make you different. Now, there's a, there's a saying in the world, a woman can do anything a man can do. That's not true. Why would you want to do what a man can do when you can already do what he can't? A woman does all the stuff men can't do. That's why men need women. All right. I'm not doing so far, ladies. Okay. So he says, let us make man in our image. So I'm going to ask you a question here, and I want you to look in Ephesians 3.15. 3, well, I'm just going to look at one word there is all I'm going to look at, and I'm going to give you a picture today that I hope sticks with you forever. Ephesians 3.15 from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. Oh, verse 14. For this reason I bow my knee to the Father of the Lord Jesus Christ, in whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. I watched a documentary one time of the universe. I, I mean, it, it kind of blew my mind. I, I, there's so much that we don't see. But they said in one inch of sky, one inch is billions of galaxies, billions. That's, that's huge. That's a lot of gas. <laughs> now stop for a minute and think of the magnitude of that. Had God asked us, we wouldn't have made it near that big. No reason. But he is extravagant. He doesn't care. So what was the reason for the universe? the solar system. Did you know that? The reason for the whole universe was for the solar system. I watched another documentary that talked about the fact that Jupiter, the whole, one, of the, one of the purposes for Jupiter is that all of the asteroids in the asteroid belt, when they come past Jupiter, the gravitational pull pulls them away from the Earth. It's stopping us from being bombarded from rocks in outer space. And that, say, that's cool. That, that's just, that's cool. So the, the whole solar system is like a huge Swiss watch, and it's, it's perfect. I mean, you look at outer space, you look at the Earth, it's just, sitting in the, it's just sitting there. The gravitational pull between the sun and the Earth and the moon is perfect. But what's the reason for the solar system? The earth sits there right in the middle of all of this massive universe, beautiful little blue and white and green planet, just sitting there, just abundance, fish and birds, and just it is absolutely beautiful. Everybody wants to go to the moon? I'll stay here. I've seen rocks. You want to see rocks? Go to Jerusalem. <laughs> Rocky would like it there. I don't know. But what's the reason for the earth? What, what was the reason for God? Now, I want you to think about this because I think God, don't get mad at me, is about 8 to 12 years old. I don't know how to say this without being human. But he has to have a basement that is very big. And he must sit down there and design animals. I mean, the stuff I see under the ocean, he must have had a crazy day. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? I mean, we, I saw a leopard fish. Lisa calls them leopard fish. She made it up. White and with black spots. And I'm going, 
That's the weirdest fish. And then blue ones. We went to this place where, y'all know the guppies that you get in the store, little guppies? Millions of them. I'm swimming between here and that door, between guppies 10 to 15 feet thick on both sides, and just swimming through them. Just millions of little neon fish. Just so, so you know, all of this, all of this, I mean, it's just, the world is abundant. Yeah. But what did it do that for? Man. God's crowning glory is you and me. Now, let me ask you the next question. Why did he make us? Fellowship. Fellowship. Yeah. Let me use another word. Could it be companionship? Could it be in all that God had? He wanted a family. That's, that's, that's an incredible statement. You and I were never designed to live without people. One of the things that as you get older, and I'm going to say this for older people, I don't know about how younger people think, I'm just knowing how older people think. <laughs> Christmas is Christmas because the kids show up. I, I mean, the presents are fun. The house is the lake is fine. Well, I'm going to tell you the big deal is when the kids show up. The family shows up. God's whole reason, now think about this for a minute, of making a human was to get you to a place that you and him could converse on the same level. That's astounding thought. Now, let's, let's go over motherhood now. We've been talking about God for a minute when this is Mother's Day. I realize that every, when, you know, a female is the nurturing side of God. She is the one that God chose to birth babies, to bring children into the earth. And it's obvious that they're different than men because the minute that baby's born, that baby's life is mom. I mean, that baby would die with that mom. I mean, he thinks he's dying all the time, even with her. But she's never, she's never far away. And Lisa was telling the story earlier about when the boys were little and she'd take them to the swimming pool. Well, they'd all be right there with her. I mean, she is like on them, listening to them, where are you and how are you doing? And all the time she's on them making sure they're okay, taking care of them, watching over them. But there's one thing about a female that no matter how much they love the little baby, everyone I'm say, I can't wait till you start walking. <laughs> you know, you get one in each arm, and then the boys that are like four go, hey, mama goes, shut up and get out. <laughs> it is, she doesn't love them, it's just, I ain't, you ain't hanging on me, you're as big as I am now, buddy, you know. So they always say, they, I can't wait till you walk. And there's another thing women always say. When are you going to learn to use a potty? Man, if they just get you out of these diapers. Now, in, back in my day, we had cloth diapers. They work faster. Because the little baby's walking around going, ha, 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 and they just hate it. And they will potty train quicker if you'll get rid of those stupid pampers. But anyway, that's my opinion anyway. Hallelujah. But every woman, no matter how much she loves her children, is looking forward to the day when that boy can go, there's a bathroom right there. Now, I've got to tell you a story, and I'm not going to tell you which boy. We raised them in the country, and we had a policy at our house. If you've got to go to the bathroom, go outside. Nothing wrong with that until you come into pop to a popco. Somehow or another, we did not teach them the difference between country and city. And one day we were eating dinner with some people and one of the boys stepped in front of the mirror and took a whiz right in front of the, right in front of the living room. And the lady looked at Lisa and says, we have a bathroom. And the boys are just going to the bathroom and they, off, they went playing again. 
And we looked at them and said, well, we haven't gotten that far in their training yet. <laughs> The front yard bay window. They just walked out. Then we're in there eating, and they just walks up, and they just, <laughs> where they go. But I tell you, Lisa was a very, 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 very good mom. But there's one thing that has become more valuable than all their boyhood, and that's to sit down now with the boys and my daughters and have an adult conversation. Amen. Amen. That's That's astounding. And I'm going to say this for the women in the church, to the kids. You're still her kids. I don't care how old you are. Amen. Nope. Amen. <laughs> Mama, the biggest deal in Mama's life is when she picks up the phone and it's her kids. Am I right? Let's go back to God. Why would you think he was any different. I asked the Lord when I was in St. Thomas, I said, all these people, and I said that earlier, and all these people are going to hell. He said, if they turn to me even a little bit, I'll meet them. But I'm not going to, I can't, I'm not going to make them do it. Now, you know, oftentimes your kids get older and sometimes they sort of get busy in their life. You remember the story of the prodigal son? You notice the dad didn't chase him? He waited for the boy to come home. And I'm going to tell you something about mamas. I don't care what that boy's done. When he turns and wants to come back, he's coming home. Because there's a, there's a love there that's beyond natural. It's a, it's, it's, a, it's a mother. It is the love of God in a female. It is that nurturing side of God. And so the Lord said this to me when I was there in, in, in St. Thomas, and he said, when I said seek, you can't turn to God and him not meet you. But if you don't turn, he won't meet you. There's a lot of people Christians trying to do it alone, and he'll let you do it. There's people right now on the earth that will live and die and go to hell because they never one time turned. They know. As a born-again Christian, and we're talking about Mother's Day, but we're talking about the fact that a female is made in the image of God. There is a caring, loving, merciful side of our Father God. And I mean the minute that you, now think about this, it doesn't matter what's going on. It doesn't matter how bad it is, and it doesn't matter who don't like you. Mama likes you. Always. <laughs> I told somebody one time, I said, they, they created the movie Dennis the Menace because of me. Everybody, everybody from, junior, from elementary school up said there was no hope for me. My mom said, you just don't know him like I know him. And I mean, mama believed in me when no one else did. And sometimes it was enough to put me over. So we're talking mamas. Happy Mother's Day, mama. Amen. So if God is looking, now think about this for a minute, because Lisa said to me one time when, when um, the boys were little, I came home and she said, honey, take me out. I said, why? She goes, I want to have an adult conversation. That does not mean she didn't love the boys. It's just that means she wants some adult time. You can be a born-again Christian, and you can be a baby, and God loves you. But I'm going to tell you something. God would love to have an adult conversation with you. And when you seek him, he will do things for you 
that you can't do for yourself. He'll take you places you can't take you. And all it really requires is that you just treat God like you do mama at Christmas. Because let me talk about Christmas and, and the most important day in the, in the earth for a woman, bar none, is Mother's Day. Forget Christmas, forget Easter, but don't you dare forget Mother's Day. Come on, ladies, help me out a little bit. And you know what an excuse is? I don't want to hear it. I want your face in my door. If it's true for her, is it true for God? The greatest joy of his heart is when you turn and go, God, what do you want to do today? I just want to be with you. You, you don't know him like you fix him to know him. He'll show you stuff. So, my question is, ladies, do you treat all your kids the same? Don't lie. I, no. No, don't answer that. You love them all the same. We love, I love all of my kids. I don't treat them all the same. I'm going to give you a scripture right now, kids. I want you to listen. Honor your mother and your father. Now, you listen to me very good. Your parents are not to chase you down in their old age. You listening to me? You find their house. Uh, you, you know, we come over here and say it one more time. There is nothing in your Bible that your that your parents owe you anything. If you saw what they did to get you where you are. You'd show up. Don't wait on your mother and dad to earn anything. They have earned it. You're alive. <laughs> and there is nothing that delights a woman more. Nothing on the planet than for my kid to show up. I mean, women and their kids can talk for hours and say nothing, but it's fine. It's none of your business. It's family. God is no different. I was on the island the other day, and he said to me, he said, I'm not any different. I'm not any different. He said, if you'll just seek me, and that what I mean by that is desire to please me, I'll turn my face to you, and I will withhold nothing from you. Now, do we have kids that have Perks the other kids don't? They, they do. Oh, yeah, they do. And they've earned it. I want to tell you something about Justin. Justin would do anything for his mom and dad. While I was gone this week, he had my tire fixed, and then he washed my inside of my truck and waxed it, and nobody asked him to do it. Now, I'm going to tell you something. Don't think that mom and daddy don't see those kinds. We see that stuff. He knows. That's why he has all my guns. Amen. So I'm fixing to turn this over to Lisa. Lisa and I decided to do this joint. So we're going to give you the feminine side of this sermon. Are you ready? Come on up here, girl. you. I just wanted to read this. It's so good. Um, I tagged this on to what Pastor Morgan was saying in Isaiah 66. God is saying this, heaven is my throne and earth is my footstool. Where is the house that you will build me? And where is the place of my rest? For all these things my hand is made and all those things exist, says the Lord. So he's saying, if heaven is my throne and earth is my footstool, where are you going to find me a place to rest? Where are you going to find me a house to live in? He says, it's all mine. I made it. 
And then he says this, which is beautiful. For all those things my hand is made, and all those things exist, says the Lord. And it says that, but on this one will I look. And I need to put my glasses back on. But on this one will I look, on him who is poor, not poor poverty, but poor, meek of heart and of contrite spirit. He who trembles at my word. This is the one that he finds his home in. This is the one that he finds his resting place in. This is the one that he wants to be with, is one who's meek of heart, one who trembles at my word and honors his word. Amen. I'm going to show you a side of God where he says down further on, he says, I will comfort you. It says, as the sun gets comfort, so it says, then you shall feed on her sides. I will extend peace. He's talking about Jerusalem and the ones that love him. I will extend peace to her like a river, verse 12, and the glory of the Gentiles like a flowing stream. Then you shall feed on her sides and you shall be carried and you will be dandled between her knees. As one whom his mother comforts, so I will comfort you. You shall be comforted in Jerusalem. You see, in God is combined, and he possesses the virtues of both masculine and feminine in the most perfect character. He possesses the manly virtues, and he possesses the women's side. Amen? And the womanly graces. I'll say it that way. Not only does he possess the manly virtues, he possesses the womanly graces. So Jesus said, he said, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, Luke 13, 34. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who kill your prophets and stone those who are sent to you. How often I wanted to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, but you were not willing. That's Jesus now talking about himself. All through Isaiah, God refers to himself on the woman's side. On the feminine side, he's not a female and he's not a male, but he is the almighty God. He is the being. So we, Amber, Zach, female and male, came out of that one being, and he split. And that's, you, you, you need to understand that God loves you so much. And my husband made this amazing statement the other day. He said, you know what? Something that your mother always did, and she did. She passed out these tracts in big red words that said, God loves you. And she had on her shirts, God loves you. And sometimes we see that so much. It's like, okay, God loves me. The truth is, is that a lot of people know God loves you, but you need to hear the words. God loves you. It's one thing for um, a, a wife, a husband, a child to know that their parent or their spouse loves them. But it's another thing for them to actually physically look at them and say, I love you. I love you. Amen? Amen. It, you want to hear those words. So I'm going to read this to you, and then I'm going to go to a scripture. And I'm not going to read a lot of it. But it says, All that is best, holiest, sweetest, and most gracious in a noble man and also in the pure-hearted woman can be found in the Lord, who is the source of all. Male and female, he's created them, and the charact characteristic feature of both are resident in his loving heart. He fuses together in his own person, the strong protective love of the man and the patient, tender, brooding, comforting, sacrificial love of the woman. God is both masculine and feminine. And he said in Psalm 91, he said this, he said, uh, he who dwells in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty. He says, under his feathers, under his wings, you shall trust that is the picture of a, of a chicken putting her wings over her brood, over her chicks. He shall cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. Now, I want you to think about God when I read this. I want you to think about God, but I, I'm going to read about moms, but I, I want you to think about God. Why? Because God has that side in him. It says this, a mother's sympathy. A wise child speaks out all his joys, sorrows, and burdens without reserve into that most secret confessional box, his mother's ear. 
and the need of a confidant is not only characteristic of childhood, it belongs to us all. God offers us the same motherly tenderness and sympathy. He heals, gladdens, sympathizes, loves, cares as no mother could. Does he not give himself the attractive name of comforter? He is the comforter. I will tell you this. I had two times, uh, you know, where two different sons were speaking into my ear, needing wisdom, just needing to air some things. And sometimes, you know, when they're not married yet and they don't have that, maybe when they are married, none of my sons are married yet, you know, they have to have someone to talk to, their father or their mother. And it's a very sacred thing for your son to speak things or your daughter to speak things into your ear and, and for them to seek advice or counsel or sympathy or comfort. And my youngest son was out on the truck and day after day, he was calling me. I wasn't calling him. I mean, there were times I was calling him. I probably called him more, but he would call me. And for a long time, so I am patient. I let them work things out. When they get to be in their upper 20s, mid 20s, just let them work some stuff out. They're coming into manhood. They're coming into their own. But when I hear the same conversation over and over and over and over, the mama bear inside of me starts to rise. And so every mama has that. And think about God. He's there to protect. He's there to cover. He's your refuge. He's your safety. He's your strong tower. And for me, it just takes so long. And if I keep hearing the same story over and over and over and over and over and over and nothing changes, then I'm going to step in. But I'm quiet and I'm patient. And this happened for a month. So I'm very patient. And basically, my son said he was learning to drive a truck, a big semi-truck, and they had him in training, and he'd never driven a stick shift in his life. And I knew that that was his problem. His dad tried to train him. He just didn't want to when he was young, but the other two wanted to. So I let him work that part of his life out. But for a month, a solid month, I heard him start to say, I can't get it. I can't get it. This man is effing me. This man is cussing me out. He is saying the most vile words 24 hours a day. I can't get this 10 gear shift over and over and over. The streams of words that this trainer, Jordan is not going to go anywhere with that kind of mouth that constantly berates. I listened to that for a month. Finally, I decided to call Prime and I said, hello. My name is Lisa Morgan. I didn't say mom. I didn't say Mrs. Morgan. I just said, hi, my name is Lisa Morgan. I'm calling in reference to one of your students by the name of Jordan. They didn't ask me who I was, and they said, well, what can we help you with? I said, one of your trainers is very badly displaying your company, and if he is one of your best, then you have one of the worst companies in the world. What's happening? Told them what was happening. They said, that's unacceptable. I said, exactly. Get him off that truck and get him with someone who can teach the young man how to drive and be a benefit and a blessing and make you money. Because this way, he's not going to make money. He's not even going to pass the test. They said, yes, ma'am. The next morning, the next morning, my son Jordan calls me. Now, this is where, but see, I'm telling you this story because God is like this for you. When you really need his help, when you, when you don't know what to do, when that heart is so broken and that spirit is so crushed and you don't know where to go, you don't know how to go, God is all of a sudden coming in like a mama bear and going, I'm taking control of the wheel now, literally. And so Jordan calls me next morning. 8 o'clock in the morning, mom, something bad has happened. I said, okay, honey, what's happened? I didn't tell Jordan I did it. <laughs> he says, something bad's happened. The police showed up at our truck, and they pulled me off of it, and they stuck me in a hotel. I said, really? He says, I'm in big trouble. I'm going to fail. I'm not going to be able to complete my course or take any of my tests. I don't know why the police yanked me off this truck. I must be doing so bad. He thought his trainer called them in and said, this boy is so bad. He was so low. He was so low. I wasn't going to tell him 
that good was on its way. But he was so low that he had failed, I had to step in and tell him. Let me tell you what I did last night. He said, oh my God, mom. <laughs> but I will tell you what happened that day. They put him with the number one trainer in the company. He was 61 years old. His name was James. He loved the Lord. He loved Jesus. And within, within one hour in that truck, Jordan could shift all 10 gears within one hour. And to this day, him and James are close, and they talk every month. So I got Mama Bear shoes for Christmas. <laughs> Amen. So I'm saying that to say this, that God loves you so much, and he will go to fight for you. Now I'm going to change courses for a minute, and I want to, I want to say this because I think maybe it'll come across better coming from me than it will from Pastor, even though he can preach at any time. But I want to talk about the word submission. The word submission is a great word, but it's touted as a bad word. Women hate to hear it, and now I'm a woman, and I'm going to talk to women about it. Because every woman in here is a, is every mother in here has been married or been in a relationship with a man at least once because she's a mother and she's had a child. But I'm going to read this to you, and I'm going to show you what God taught me, and hopefully this will help you. The word submission just means to yield your will to the will of another. It doesn't mean you're a doormat. It doesn't mean that you're less. It just means that two heads is a freak. And woman, I'm going to talk to you this morning. If you've decided you want to marry and have a companionship as a man, as a husband, you are going to need to learn these scriptures and you need to learn what God thinks about these scriptures and how he views you and your husband's relationship. If you don't ever want to yield your will, number one, that's dangerous because that means that when the things get rough and tough, you won't even yield your will to God the Father who loves you so much. And then if you don't ever want a man physically that lives on this earth to ever tell you what to do, and I don't mean that in a bad way, but if you don't ever want to yield your will to him, you will never have a companion as a man, and you will never experience the joys of having that close friendship in a man. And if that's what you want, then stay single. But if that's not what you want, and you want to have a great life, you're going to have to learn how God set it up. Amen? So submitting, really, submission is strength of character. If I can submit to his will and I don't want to do that and I don't agree, that's strength of character on my part to be able to go, I trust God with this decision and God will take care of me. And once I submit my will to the will of him, then it's off me. If he messes up, it's off me. I still got the brownie points. He doesn't. Because now he's responsible for messing up. And I'm saying this in a way that you understand that. That if you're married to someone who doesn't always make right decisions, and I'm not talking about people or men telling women they've got to go to the bar or they've got to go do things that are against God's word. We're not, we're not on that plane right now. We're talking about normal life decisions that have to be made. If my husband told me I need to go to the bar and he's going to make me drink, I'm like, you know, go take a long walk off a short pier. I ain't disobeying God. But if you say that we have to move to Montana, I'll say yes, you know, or whatever. But um, he, he's not saying that we submit to evil or someone. You submit to him as to the Lord, as a godly decision. So here you go. I'm going to read this. Wives, likewise be submissive. Be willing to yield to your own husband. That even if some do not obey the word, they will without a word be won by your conduct. Did you know you can win? You can win your husband to the Lord if you have a good, chaste conduct in the Lord. You can win him. Doesn't mean they'll all be saved, but you can win him. If some don't even obey the word, they, without you nagging them, without you talking to them about Jesus, if they observe your conduct 
that it's the way it, you're acting that they may be won over by that. When they observe your chaste conduct accompanied by fear, the fear of the Lord in you and you honoring them. Do not let your adornment, women, be merrily. It doesn't mean be totally. It just says don't let this be the only thing that you adorn yourself with. Don't let your adornment, your outside wear, fine apparel, gold, be merrily the way you look and fashion. It says, but let it also be. You should dress up. But it says, don't let it be the only thing you look at. Let it also be the hidden person of the heart with the incorruptible beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is very precious in the sight of God. Hey, we're all working on that. If the more you read this, the more you'll have a gentle and quiet spirit. That doesn't mean you're shy or you're timid or you're a wuss or a wimp. There's times you just need to be gentle to your husband and to be quiet. Be quiet. It doesn't mean you're a wuss and that you're weak. Be quiet. Amen? Because God says it's going to work if you'll do it this way. Let it be the hidden person of the heart with the incorruptible beauty. He calls you beautiful when you have a gentle and quiet spirit, which is very precious in the sight of God. You are not a dope if you have a gentle and quiet spirit. You don't always have to be having your way. I tell you what I think about it. My man tell me this, I'm going to do that. Well, you ain't going to have a man for very long. You're going to do this and you're going to come live where I want to live and you're going to do this and this is what I'm going to do and you're going to follow my career because I am just the queen of the universe and no, you're not. That's not God's way. That is Satan's way. I'm doing what I want. I want my cake and eat it, but I don't want to do anything for you. That's not a relationship. For in this manner, in former times, the holy women who trusted in God. Here's the key word. The holy women who trusted in God. Women, you got to trust in God. If he said that, a, that it precious in his sight is a quiet and gentle spirit, shut up. And stop running your mouth. It drives him away from you. It doesn't mean that you don't have an opinion. And men, if you had half a brain in your head, you would ask your wife's opinion. At least ask her opinion. And women, at the end of him getting your opinion, if he says yes or no, go with the decision and let God bless you. Because he'll bless you for that obedience right there. Amen? Amen. All right. So here we go. For in this manner, in former times, both the holy women trusted in God also adorned themselves. So now it's not the way I fix my hair or my jewelry, the way I do my nails. It's also me adorning myself with a gentle and quiet spirit and trusting the outcome of the situation to God being submissive to their own husbands. You don't submit yourself to anybody's husband except yourself. Case in point, yesterday we were in a jewelry store and I had already told my husband and he had agreed. I said, honey, I want to go the last one, Valentine's. It's around the corner. You know where it is. And when I get out of this place, he said, okay. And that was his last words. He agreed and he left. He said, I'll pick you up at Valentine's. When I got done in Alpha's, he had left, I was alone, and I was getting ready to head to Valentine's, and the, one of the men there at the front of the store said to me, your husband told me, he was nice, your husband told me that you're supposed to stay here, do not go to Valentine's, he'll pick you up here. Just, he changed his mind. And, you know, me wanting to honor my husband, I'm like, okay, because I would just well, my husband, my husband said I was going to Valentine's. I want to go to Valentine's. But I stopped there for a minute. I'm like, if he told him that, there's a reason he told him that. And I pause. He's like, he told you to stay here. I walked to the bathroom. And on the way back to the bathroom, the Lord said, he's lying. He's lying to you. He wants you to stay in the store and keep shopping. I said, all right. I, 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 would, I received that. I could hear him say, he's lying to you. I came back to the man and I said, I'm going to Valentine's. 
you tell my husband that according to our agreement, he's picking me up at Valentine's. Got that? He said, okay. And I left. But, you know, you'll know. If you're close to God, you'll know when he speaks to you. Because I wanted to honor my husband. I didn't want to, like, there might have been a reason. Don't go to Valentine's. But it wasn't. He was lying to me. <laughs> Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord with an Ill, a little L. Not Lord Jesus Christ. Lord just means master. I'm letting you be the one lead the home. Whose daughters are all of you if you'll do good. And then you will not be afraid with any terror. So that, I'm sorry, Miss Megan, that's 2 Peter 3, verse 1 through 9. Sarah obeyed, verse 6, Abraham, 2 Peter, 1 Peter, I'm sorry, 3, 6. 1 Peter 3, 6. Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, whose daughters you are if you are do good and are not afraid with any terror. My, my Lord told me one time, he said, the reason that, that you are experiencing so much fear in your life um, and stress, one of the reasons is, is because you're not fully yielding yourself. Now I'm telling my sins. You're not fully yielding yourself to his will. And I said, I'm afraid. I'm afraid of that. And he said, I am your father. I am his father. I will never let anything harm you. If he goes the wrong way, I will still protect you. And I know how to get you both back on track. He said, you are not less. You are not subservient. You are still my daughter. And if he ever does you wrong, he'll get it from me. You trust me. And he doesn't, he's not that way. But the Lord had to speak to me and go, don't be afraid of following his lead. He says, even if he messes up, I'll protect you in the mess. And you'll be okay. He says, just obey me. And there'll be no more fear and terror in your life. Amen? That was just my story. Husbands, likewise, dwell with them with understanding and give honor to the wife. Men, if you don't honor your wife, your, your children will not honor her as a mother. The way you speak in the home to your wife is the way the children will speak to their mother. The way you honor her and speak about her is the way they will honor her, and vice versa. Women, if you don't speak well to your husband, of your husband, your children will not honor their father. But it says right here, men, honor your wives. Giving honor as to the weaker vessel and being heirs together the grace of life. So men, that your prayers will not be hindered. Finally, all of you, now we're encompassing everybody. Finally, all of you be of one mind, have compassion for one another. Love each other as brothers, be tenderhearted, be courteous. Not returning evil for evil or reviling for reviling, but on the contrary, blessing. Knowing that you were called to this, that you may inherit a blessing. You might say, I don't know what I'm called to. You are called to be a blessing. You are called not to revile back. How many of you, when you suffer, can you stand there and take the beating? Can you keep your mouth shut when someone is ugly to you? When someone's looking at you and get the mask up over your nose. Can you shut up? Can you shut up? I'm not saying you also always should shut up. But I'm saying that if you suffer, Jesus, it says Jesus opened not his mouth when he was reviled. And he wants us to be just like him. Amen? So it says, knowing that you were called to this, that you may inherit a blessing. You were called to be a blessing so that you may inherit a blessing. If you don't be a blessing. You'll never inherit a blessing. We just got off of this, mamas.
The Lord showed you how you're to be. You're to be a blessing to your husband. But God will always take care of you. You are not less. You are not under him. Submit. Yield. And then later in scripture it says, every wife, submit one to another. There's times when the husband needs to submit to the wife. Because she is making a right decision. It says, everyone yield. Learn to yield to each other. Amen? That you may inherit a blessing. For he who would love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips from speaking deceit. Let him turn away from evil and do good. Let him seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord, verse 12, are on the righteous, and his ears are open to their prayers. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil. And on and on it goes. For Christ suffered once for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God. God loves us so much. He loves us so much. But he's also strong in character. Jesus yielded his body, his soul, and his flesh. He did the ultimate yield and paid for you in blood. Suffered more than any man or woman could ever hope to suffer. Not hope. It's not hope to suffer. But Jesus paid the ultimate price. We are supposed to follow his lead. It says he was led like a sheep to the slaughter and he opened not his mouth. And so I'm saying to this to you, mamas on Mother's Day and fathers and all people, learn to seek God. And the first part of, of your relationship with God Submit your will to him first and then learn how to submit laterally with each other and what the right timing is for that. When God says something's beautiful and it's precious in his sight, you're going to receive the blessing for it. Doesn't matter what the actions of the other person are, God's going to take care of you. Amen? Hallelujah. Let's pray. Father, I thank you this morning for the goodness of God. You said that even the hills and the mountains, even if the hills and the mountains depart, I will not stop loving my people and showing them tender mercies and loving kindness. Lord, you said in Isaiah that my loving kindness, your loving kindness will never depart from us even if the islands are cast into the sea, and that's a pretty big deal, if you think about it. Lord, thank you. You said, even if the islands are cast into the sea, my loving kindness, my loving kindness will never depart from you. Say that with me. Say, God, your loving kindness will never depart from me. Even if the hills and the mountains are removed, and the islands are thrown into the sea. You said, don't worry about it. My mercies and my loving kindness will never depart from, from me, Lord. Thank you for the glory of God. Women, I want you to just pray this in your heart today and say, Lord, make me more of a willing vessel in the areas that I need to be more willing to yield and to submit. That I will trust you, God. That as long as I'm obeying your word, I know I've got freedom in the outcome. I know I've got your blessing, and I want your blessing on my life. I don't want to continually fight and scratch and claw to try to get the desires of my heart but if I will listen to 1 Peter chapter 3 and be like Sarah with Abraham, you will bless me. Because it's not whether my husband always makes the right decision. It's whether I've obeyed you in submitting to him. And then you bless me over and above whatever decision he makes because I'm following you. And I want the whole congregation to pray this. Say, Lord, help us to submit all of us, all of myself to you. My coming in 
my going out. My heart, my soul, my mind, what I think about all day, and my body, what I do with it. I know that the more I yield to you in all those areas, the greater blessing comes on me. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. I learned something from Pastor Mark one time about your parents, speaking of Mother's Day, that you do not honor just with your words. You actually honor with your substance because your substance has value. Words are valuable. I like when people say good things. But when somebody gives you something that they've earned out of their paycheck, especially to your mothers or your fathers, that really honors them because you're placing a higher value on them. And so the Bible says God's not mocked. A man's going to reap what he sows. Your parents are getting older. And if you sow into them honor now, your kids and people will sow honor to you when you get older. But if a son or a, or a daughter shames their mother or they don't think about them, that's what's going to come upon them when they get older. God says, I'm not going to be mocked. Whatever a man sows, it's whatever. He's going to reap that. And so sometimes I do things for dad and the Lord will say, do it. And it's because when I get older, I want, you know, my kids to do it for me. You know, dad don't need to be out there always washing his truck in the heat. <laughs> he needs to be in there studying. And when I see his truck was a royal wreck from him driving through the mud, the Lord, it honors God for me to honor him. And so, um, you know, the Lord told me one time, your grandfather's not going to be around a long time. Honor him. And I know that's going to come back on me one day. And I went and spent time with my grandfather. And, just, and I'm speaking really about relation to mothers. Your, your grandmother, your, you know, your, uh, your grandfather. But you only have so much time to honor your parents while they're here. And, you know, and, and um, I, I want to sow that seed while they're here. And, you know, I don't, don't put in condemnation if you never did when your parents were here. You have spiritual fathers and mothers as well that you can sow into. I sow a lot in, into people like, like spiritual mothers like Mary Fran and spiritual fathers like Mark Hankins, honoring them. Because I want that to come back on me. Uh, if you're going to be someone who dishonors all the time, that's probably why you've you probably had some rough things in your life. Um, you know, mom made a great statement to me. She goes, you don't always have to do everything I say when, after you turn 18. I mean, outside of work, because I work for them. But outside of work, she said, you don't always have to do everything I say, but you still have to honor us. And when, you know, when you're a child under 18, you're going to honor and you're going to obey your, your mom and dad. But there will be a day that will come that your parents don't control you anymore, but you still show them honor. Even I know a lot of y'all have parents that are maybe not Christians. You'll still honor them. You don't have to do everything they say because you can get some crazy advice from your parents when they're not Christians. I, I've heard it. It is very true. But you can still show them the love of God and honor them. And so that's, I had to learn that difference. Mom and dad, I love you. I honor you, respect you. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do this, and that's okay. And uh, I think that my life got a lot better <laughs> when I started honoring my father and mother, even after I got older. Uh, sometimes when you're young, you do just go your own way. You do some stupid things, and you, know, you, don't, like, you don't think about your parents all the time. But now as I'm getting older, I'm starting to think more about them because I want to sow into them now. So just think about your parents uh, today and, and teach your kids that. You have to teach them that. I didn't learn that until Pastor Mark would teach that, and they taught me that. Honor your father and mother. And the first thing, if you're here today about honor, is to get into the family of God, get born again. It says, God said, if your natural father is being evil, the evil means natural, know how to get, give good gifts, how much more your heavenly father. If you're not saved, you're not born again, you've never made Jesus Lord, we invite you to come up, make Jesus Lord, get into the family of God, and, and um, learn about who he is and how much he wants to take care of you. And if you need prayer for any other thing, our prayer team is going to get up, whoever they may be today. I don't know who it is, but I'll, I'll be up here. But they're here. If you need prayer for any other thing, we're not going to turn anybody away, even on Mother's Day. And mothers, we love you. You look beautiful. We're happy to celebrate you. And uh, go have a blessed day. And we'll see you all later.